the former speakers, I agree uh, with you. And uh, I got the idea, you talked a lot about uranium, and there is a very special date about uranium. 16th of July, 1945, the first atomic bomb exploded in US. Four years after, 16th of July, 1949, my mother exploded. I came out. I was born that date. Then you can count, 16th of July was this year, was my 70th birthday. I'll no, no, no. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> uh, but I was called for, from my children and my grandchildren. I got four children and six grandchildren. Come, Dad, to your birthday pre uh, celebration already on Sunday, though I was born. Uh, it was on Tuesday. And then, among the gifts, there was one letter with a ticket. You are going to India for 30 days. I didn't know anything about it before. And you have to give two presentations to, or lectures in India about my work. So I don't have that <laughs> PPT presentation. I was busy to go here and met with my friends. And I will take uh, about, what about my language? I have some difficulties with the Indian intonation now and then. And I think you mix some other Hindi language inside too. Sometimes I couldn't understand nothing at that time. <laughs> uh, what about you? How many of you can hear me clearly? Okay, then I go ahead, but still I try to speak. Slowly. Huh? Uh -uh. Uh, the main topic, what I'm talking about, there are two scientific, I would say, paradigm shift. We say, not only me, but also my fellow Indian comrade, Rameshwan, and some pioneers before us, that in cancer, the microbes plays, I will say, the most important role. They are not the cause of it. The cause, you gave so many causes, but they play the most important role. So if you know about these microbes, you have so many new avenues to change the outcome of cancer. You don't have to die from it if you check on these microbes and treat them in a good manner. Secondly, I said microbes, and that is maybe even bigger. You won't find much about it in the textbooks, but if you have a bacteria, in the normal schools, you are taught, you take a bacteria, maybe from the body, you put it in a petri dish, grow it for three days, and then comes out a colony of this, same bacteria, you check them, they all look the same, and they only uh, give birth by dividing themselves to new bacteria, the same size, the same appearance, everything. But these say, one bacteria as a life cycle. They start, and I see now, this is difficult. Think about the fjeril, <laughs> um, the butterfly. It starts by an egg. It goes to a larva. The larva transforms into a pup pupa, and then Finally, an adult that flies around maybe for one week, two weeks, then transform back into eggs. The same with our microbes. 
So from what we are, you could take the streptococcus we have in the mouth, in the mucosa, they could change and go through a cycle, maybe not only with four steps like the butterfly, but eight stages maybe. We don't know them exactly. I think no scientist in the world know one bacteria exactly the full cycle of life they have. But I can give you a hint. They start with small virus-like or virus-sized particles running around in our blood, and we have seen them. Then they grow up like cocky formed, and compared to those in the petri dish, these forms in the blood or in tissue, they don't have any cell wall. They are cell wall deficient. So in the literature, you can see for CWD, then you find these type of bacteria. So that they can change the size and shape quite a lot. And these bacteria then go on, they could be coquiforms, and these coquiforms could be rather good, uh, great. And in the final stages, they even look like fungi-like forms. They could create mycelial forms. And that was the sensational result we could see in Gothenburg from 40 specimens of cervix cancer brought from Pondicherry, India, to Gothenburg. Every one of them, then we smashed them and put them in the glass and put them into a microscope. They were filled with yeast form, that's the fungi, and mycelial forms. And the severe form of the disease the patient had got, the more fungi was inside the tumor. The cancer cells were there too, but what we think, that is a hypothesis, in the tumor, in the center of the tumor, you have a concentration of fungi-like bacteria grows outside this tumor. You have their own body cells that try to encapsulate the fungi. But they will take the first hit too because then the fungi will try to eat it's, um, it doesn't do like we do. We, d we take the food within our body. The fungi it gives out their f uh, enzymes outside their body. And some of their enzymes are DNA changing. So they change our cells that comes close to the fungi. That's why we, got a, we can observe all these genetic changes in cancer cells. But I think that is a second phenomenon. The first phenomena is an infection growing very badly. I think now it's the film is for us to look at. You see more of it. No, the fungi giving out the enzymes is what is changing our cells surrounding the tumor. And that we detect as a cancer cells. And we think it's a genetical change that it's a start of the cancer. It's a secondary phenomena. But I don't say also the infection is not the primary one. The primary cause is the environment in our body. It could be like we saw lead, uh, tox toxicity, it could be so many multifactorial things. Then it's, uh, we create a milieu in the body, acidic, for example, where the fungi thrives. So if you look at the fungi, you can see, we can thrive it, give it a lot of sugar, the fungi will grow. We can starve the fungi, eat carbohydrate reduced food and stick to, and we are in India now. You have one plant in India, excellent, 
in fungi killing. That's the coconut oil. The lauric and caprinic acids in the coconut. So just to Google. Uh, no, it's on. We, we go for that one. Then we can have discussion. I can talk more. They start. Uh, 24 minutes about my mentor and so forth. Då tänkte jag som så att då gör jag det själv, då är min egen mottagning. Så jag öppnade egen mottagning och köpte mina mikroskop. För jag visste precis vad jag ville göra. Det måste man veta innan man handlar så dyra saker. We never had this kind of things, and uh, I tried to get my colleagues in the microbiology department to be interested. They were not. And for me, whether somebody is interested or not, if I'm interested, I have to go after it. The book, I think the name of the book was Hidden Killers. And so I got interested because I was already working on cancer. And I was looking at anything that could give us information on cancer. And uh, so I ended up loading him in Sweden, talking to him about his work and the fact that there's, there's a, a huge volume of information on interaction with microbes and the body. When I was microscopic in the body, I saw that all kroniska sjukdomar och olika slag. Det vill säga att man var besvärad av olika typer av sjuklighet. De var eh, nedlipsade med infektionsväxt eller mikrobiologisk växt i eh, kroppsvätskorna. Jag skulle faktiskt carry samples, tissue samples från India till Sweden. Those days it was easy. You know, so I would go there and uh, take things there and check under the microscope because I couldn't have a similar kind of När jag hade tittat färdigt på blodet så ja, man kan säga att man kan inte titta färdigt på blodet för det kan tydligen variera i det oändliga. Men eh, när jag tyckte att jag hade sett det viktigaste då började jag intressera mig för hur, hur eh, tumörerna såg ut inuti. Jag förmodade att eh, de infektioner eller den mikrobiologiska växten som jag såg i kroppsväskan skulle även finnas i de fasta vävnaderna. Det var för mig naturligt. Jag misstänkte det helt enkelt. Och det var mycket märkligt för det har hänt i slag i slag. As far as uh, the results of what you did, on somebody has told me astonishing Så 
pensa. Det är ingen människa som ställer upp på, din, på, ens, på ens egna idéer. De får man ställa upp på själv. Och eh, när man då sitter med eh, intressanta resultat så vill man ju gärna ja, man vill ju ta långt för andra. Det är ju det, är ju det första som, som, eh, som, man, som man vill göra. Man vill ju ta om det. Man förstår ju själv att det är viktigt att andra människor får ta del. Och blir man inte bekräftad så dör allt i hopp med tiden. Now we also have noticed that the formations were different uh, in uh, each uh, you know, uh, type of tumors. So it also indicates that there's a possibility that if somebody really takes it further, we should be able to identify specific microbes associated with specific tumors. Now, having said that, whether tumors, whether the microbes cause the tumors or the tumors have allowed the microbes, microbes to colonize will always remain a question as far as I'm concerned. Nu har det kommit arbetet som visar att mikroorganismerna förstör kroppens vävnadsceller. Det har kommit till ord i ett sånt arbete. When you're dealing with something that is about the smallest thing you can see, microscopically, you can put a lot of different names on it. You know? uh, so again, I, uh, I always felt that the ultimate proof would be to, to convince doctors there is something there that you can see. This is what it looks like. This is what is seen frequently in various types of cancer. And this is what you should be recognizing as bacteria rather than as a, a nuclear dust or granules. What does that mean, granules? I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a nothing word, you know. If it's a granule, that's a piece of sand, that's one thing. But if it's a, if it's a microbe, you should know it's a microbe. Microbe causing cancer or cancer inviting microbes to be growing there. My stand is very simple. I don't believe microbes can identify people and say, hey, I have an issue with you, therefore I need to fight with you. Microbes, like any other living forms that are going on trying to find a cozy place where they can live, they can colonize, grow, multiply, establish themselves without a threat to their presence. So, in this case, if the microbe goes around looking for the right kind of environment, it would prefer. Now, what is interesting is certain kinds of diseases invite or, or, or create a milieu which is good for certain types of microbes. I think one of these days, you know, it will be discovered that, yes, there is this cancer germ, yes, it can be found normally as well as in cancer, but they are extremely important in terms of initiating cancer because we know that any time you have bacterial buildup, you have inflammation. Is always the first sign of cancerous activity. Uh, I, I did as much as I could. I'm still continuing to do what I'm doing because I know uh, what uh, we, what Eric did, and, and later what we did together is amazing. And there's a whole. There's a, a lot of information to be dug out. And, and what we uncovered is not something which did not exist before or not something that was not known to science before. We just look at the cell wall deficient forms, which is the basis of what Eric and I got and did and started looking for what other forms are there in tissues. For over 150 years, nearly, medical journals, especially journals focused on microbiology, did talk about 
cell wall deficient forms or L forms, bacterial L forms. But microbiologists themselves very conveniently did not bother to continue on that work. Uh, they say a lot of doctors still believe that bacteria have one form, which is called monomorphism. Now, why anybody would still believe that in 2017, I have no idea. <laughs> but that's, that's part of it. But I also think the, the biggest part is if there is a germ in cancer that you can see consistently in cancer by looking under the microscope with a special coloring, and we have not seen this, it makes us look like, you name it, fools or it's like it's that's it's inexcusable so, so it would be it would be horrible for a medical science to admit that there was a cancer germ that you could see microscopically and of course that in itself would totally disrupt you know international uh, cancer research as well as drug therapy and on and on and on. So you can see why it would be a terrible threat to the, uh, not only to science, but to the economics of science. Ja, märker du att nu är jag 78 så märker jag att så får jag vara med om lite grann och bekräftelse vad folk börjar få bli intresserade av vad jag har gjort. Det beror väldigt mycket på att Ingmar och jag träffades för 20 år sedan och diskuterade om vi inte skulle starta en tidning. Och då skriver om allt sånt här. Och det var ju Ingmar väldigt intresserad av faktiskt. Och tack vare honom som det har blivit en rörelse i Sverige som så ett visst intresse för det jag har gjort. Och eh, nu är det liksom lite grann, nu, nu, nu har vagnen kommit igång lite grann, så nu rullar den. Och det blir inte lätt att stoppa den, skulle jag tro. Eh, för nu händer det saker, det har jag märkt. Good afternoon. I think uh, it's, I'd like to welcome all of you here for a, a brief uh, thing. Yes, we were talking about microbes and cancer. Stand beside me. Okay. No, no, but uh, I can introduce him. Yes, yes, uh, yes. Uh, I, I took the microphone from my good friend Ramesh here. He will stand beside me. So I. Uh, when reaching these values or uh, standpoint we have today, that cancer is uh, very highly integrated with microbes, and the microbes are going through a cycle, that is a paradigm shift. So I have to go back for myself and my uh, time, how I shifted in my brain, but because your own brain could be, uh, uh, your own brain could be stopping you from thinking in a new way. It started by, and on the film, you saw my wife at that time. She, uh, in 1991, uh, I made, uh, Another book, and I'll tell you about it. It was called AIDS Taboo. And that book uh, was about how did the AIDS epidemic, and especially how was the virus HIV created? Was it by man, nature, or by God? Uh, OK, very shortly. I came to the, to, to the conclusion it was man-made in a laboratory. But then my wife told me, I feel something hard in my breast. 
like a pea size, and later on it was uh, examined as a breast cancer, the wife you saw here. And because of writing that AIDS book, I was a bit familiar to go and to the library at that time. Internet wasn't that popular. And find and even read scientific literature. But first I comforted her and said, you know, breast cancer these days, you know, they have so good treatment, so forth. So it is actually no problem. That was what I was thinking. But when I read the scientific text, I said, the problem is as great as it has been for the last 30, 40 years. Only through early diagnosis, they improved the statistics. So many more stay alive more than five years because by this mammography, you can find the cancer three, four years earlier. But still, the death rate is very high. So then, okay, she was called to the clinic immediately for surgery and radiation because it went up into the armpit. You could see on the, uh, there. But then we went to that doctor, Eric Enby, because she had got, she was at the um, spa resort area and she got a piece of paper from another breast cancer woman. And she told her, don't be anxious. This doctor helped me. You can phone him. And she helped her too later on. And when that book I wrote about AIDS was uh, given out in the audience, was again, we also sitting. Okay, we have talked a little on telephone before, and I got his book, and that was called, maybe you heard it, it was called Hidden Killers, where he wrote about all this microbe cycle. And when I started to read that one, it doesn't go along with what I have studied before at university and so forth. So I put it aside. It can't be true. That's a normal reaction for most people. But I think only two weeks later, I was at an AIDS conference in Amsterdam, Netherlands. Speaking there were among people like Luc Montagnier, who later on got Nobel Prize for the HIV. But there was also one ex-France researcher called Gaston Nesson. He went in asylum later on to Canada. He had made a microscope. He could even uh, get up to 30,000 magnification with his microscope through certain lens technique. And he showed a film about these microbes. So if two researchers like Eric Enby and that had come to the same conclusion independently, it means something. Then I started to do my research uh, in literature and checked uh, the findings of Eric. I stayed in the house of Eric for two months and checked with his patients and looked into the blood, like here. And we could see that almost all chronic patients showed a totally different uh, picture of their blood specimen compared to healthy ones. So actually, uh, what's the thing? That's, that impressed on me. And then I changed. I made that paradigm shift. And I hope the world could do it far more. Uh, then I checked in history too, and uh, it was not that much, it was cut off here. But in the advent of bac- microbiology or bacteriology, there was one in the, ni- mi- in the midst of the 19th century, 1840, 50 something, there was one doctor in Vienna uh, called. Uh, you give me the name, <laughs> Ramesh. The one in Vienna who was later hospitalized because he, he told the doctors to wash their hands going from Se- uh, Ignaz Semelvich. Oh, you know I'm 70 years old now, so name they drop and f- come out and in. 
uh, he checked out the birth uh, death rate for females giving birth and even their babies was extremely high in that hospital. So he figured out and checked out what was actually happening. They didn't know of bacteria at that time. But then he saw the doctors. They went from, ob, uh, ob, you say, abduction, abduction, and then the, when they called, one woman is giving birth. They just ran from that room to the other and helped her out with the baby. Aha, uh -huh. there could be something that is spreading that could be disseminated. He didn't call them. The bacteria wasn't known at that time. But he said, wash your hands in between. And they, they were forced to do it. So the death rate, they fell. But that doctor, Ingrid Semmelweis, they laughed at him. And he ended up in an uh, asylum, uh, some lunatic, because they were so hard on to him, though his method worked. It was only him, for him to be recognized about 30, 40 years later when Louis Pasteur in France and Robert Koch in Germany found that we have small things in our body called, and they call them bacteria, that could even kill a big man of 70, 80 kilograms. They laughed at them too. But then I saw, what about Pasteur? He took his finding from a somewhat other microbiologist in France who was called Antoine Bechamp. And he had seen the same thing in his uh, microscope as Eric Enby, as Nesson, and so forth. And then there was another Swede, Ernst Bernhard Almqvist. He was going to be a professor. He went for a short term to Paris to st uh, work together with Pasteur, but then he spent many months alongside with Robert Koch, and he checked his uh, tuberculosis bacterium, like now they call them mycobacterium. He checked them, took them out, and he made some experiments outside and let the bacteria grow in different uh, nutrition, and then he checked in the microscope. And they look different depending on the milieu. So he said, that there must be some polymorphism or pleomorphism among bacteria. But Robert Koch, and they told Robert Koch, we must publish about these findings. Robert Koch said, no. It is enough to convince uh, the scientific world that there is one bacteria that could kill a human being, and that bacteria is a bacteria, is a bacteria, and divide no more. <laughs> So, but Bernhard Anquist, he went on in Sweden. And he was the one, he was a professor, and he was also in the leading two main cities in Sweden. He saw that they uprooted cholera, typhus, paratyphus, and some more diseases by introducing sewage system. Water in pipes instead from the well. And uh, the, you shouldn't throw the night pot out to the pigs running in the streets in the morning. That, there you had the, you say, what do you, sewage system. That is the right word for it. Oh. We introduced that in Sweden. Then all these diseases disappeared. But instead, okay, I can tell about Sweden too. Uh, we have the three main diseases the death cause in Sweden are uh, cardiovascular disease, number one, about 50%. And even in that one, I think you show these Finnish results there. They have shown excellent, the Finnish now, that the cardiovascular disease inside our arteries and capillaries, or not capillaries, but arteries and veins, there could be a plaque forming due to bacteria sitting inside there. The cholesterol comes to intervene with these bacteria, but they don't help that much. Mm. So they showed excellently. Number two in Sweden is cancer. And I think, I just heard, Sweden is number four country in the world, the worst, fourth worst, the high incidence in cancer. And it's growing. And number three, 
is iatrogenic death. Death caused mainly by side effects. They cheat almost all people above 60 years to take statins to lower their cholesterol in Sweden. I think you know better. If you are going to be 90 years old, you must have the ability to rise your cholesterol levels high enough. If you don't have that, then you die like 82 or 72 or something like that. Cholesterol, yeah, 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 yeah. So it's a good thing. And there is one Swede, Swede Danish doctor, Uffe Ranskog. He was against this myth for like now 30 years. Now he got right from the scientific community, but not from the big pharma community because they make so many billions from this statin selling. Oh. Uh, the side effects of statins and so many other medi the medical, medical treatment too. And also, also oh. and also these studies are made in US a few they notice the side effects, people coming rushing to the hospitals, and maybe one third is coming to the hospitals due to side effects from the prescribed drugs, if they're artificial. <laughs> but okay, uh, maybe I should take more about the thing too. To change the milieu. I think is a very, very best way to fight. We should talk about cancer and these fungi, uh, especially. I think I mentioned coconut oil is extremely good. There could be another 200 herbs that are good. Uh, curcumin, turmeric, is excellent to keep it low. Uh, then you have one simple used by Italian doctor is sodium bicarbonate. It t fades off the tumor within six days. Only problem is to get high dosage of sodium bicarbonate. It costs you about 500 rupees, one kilogram. And that's enough to treat so many patients. It should come close to the tumor, so you use uh, you go through the arteries to reach the tumor. That's a little bit problem. You can't take it that way. But uh, on skin tumors, you can use it. So I have a small sign here. I use uh, sodium carbonate on it, then it fades off. Then there is two, what nature gav gave us. Uh, you know, sun, healthy air, because the moles, they grow where it is wet, where there is no sun, and where there is low level of oxygen. Do the opposite. And giving ox oxygen, uh, I saw from outside, like ozone therapy is very healthy. Hyperbaric oxygen therapy, you can be introduced in cancer therapy. And then uh, a Swedish, oh, okay, some of you know too, nano silver. To take silver, very, very refined, almost atomic level, and dilute that in water, because then it can go from the mucosa straight into your blood, and it uh, goes through the whole body. And it looks like the mechanism, one silver is uh, binding loosely like 8 to 15 oxygen atoms at its side. And when it comes close to a uh, microbe in the blood or at, uh, inside the tissue, it uh, gives out this oxygen and kill off the microbe. And also that nanosilver, you can use it for the intestine, but it saves the good bacteria. It is not like the common uh, antibiotics that kill off all that's no good. Uh, I think I've come a lot. You, if you have some question about it, you can take it now, or I give the microphone to Ramesh.
I think you he's, can. He's, go he's going to talk later. We'll be taking shortly a lunch break. Uh, on the microbes. We had that very moment, 1994 uh, in Gothenburg. That was me and Eric Enby who talked a lot on the film. But the third man in the film who later went to Montreal was, <laughs> I forgot the name, <laughs> dot S E and, and Swedish. And there are some uh, very nice um, videos too that you can see in the microscope for different diseases. And just remarking to what you said too, uh, I couldn't say at that time, but there are recent findings now that the Alzheimer disease, that's a, you said it was almost a new disease and some of three of your colleagues got it. Oh, but then science has made a very big fault because new findings says that Alzheimer too is a disease where the pathogens, the microbes, plays a very, very important role, es especially fungi up in the brain. And the first thing that the body defends itself with is building up this beta amyloid plaque. Science thought they were a part of the disease. They took the beta amyloid plaque and the pi patient died much faster. But hopefully it, it may change. But we need your help also to spread these ideas. Big Pharma is awful. They stop these things. Uh, uh, film is on. ready. Yeah, yeah, film is ready. Before film as such, we just want to, we'll just start that filming two minutes. Uh, Babu Rausch will leave otherwise. Uh, it's a 